In this tutorial, we're going to be exploring how to play some pedal steel style riffs on the electric guitar. It'll be two parts. This first part, we're going to be uh, going phrase by phrase and note by note through this set of riffs in the key of A. Uh, and in the process, we're going to be talking about how to make this electric guitar uh, kind of mimic or sound a little bit more like a pedal steel. And in the second tutorial, uh, we're going to be taking what we learned and just kind of briefly talking about how we can apply that to all these other keys and we're going to be able to play this set of riffs not only in the key of A, like we're really drilling down on here, uh, but we'll be able to play it in the key of C, D, and G as well. So let's jump right in and let's learn this first riff in the key of A. So the first riff looks like this. Alright, within this riff, we're going to be able to talk about a lot of the techniques. To start, let's understand where we are in the neck. This is over an A chord, which is a one chord in this progression, and this is kind of the position five pentatonic box. So we're right in that box to start, right? Um, the first thing we do is two of the techniques. We're bending mechanically, and we're using our pinky uh, to do a volume swell. So pedal steel literally has pedals, right? And the, the pedal steel player to bend uh, isn't going like this with his finger like we do on the electric guitar. He just got his slide or his steel on a note and he presses the pedal and it mechanically takes it from here up a whole step or a half step or however he has it tuned. And that's why you get that mechanical bending sound. So it's not like we do a blues bend, you know, it's it's very mechanical sounding. Um, and he's also got other strings ringing out. He can have his slide over all of his strings, press down one pedal and just have one of the strings move. So that's why we have... We're mimicking that sound of the mechanical bending motion uh, while some other strings are ringing out. Uh, and the other thing is, most of the time, pedal steel players are using a volume pedal and on a Telecaster, the reason you see guys do this a lot on a Telecaster is because you can get your pinky finger on the volume knob and mimic that without actually having a volume pedal, even though you could be playing this on any electric guitar if you had a volume pedal and just using your foot uh, to do these volume swells. So the first one starts uh, with, like I said, two of the kind of techniques. So we're going to get our pinky set on our volume knob here, and we're going to we can start with it all the way open. We'll roll it back about 40 or 50 percent. Then we've got a ring finger, fourth fret of G, pinky finger, fifth fret of B. We're going to pick both of these, do a mechanical bend, and roll up the volume all at the same time. Then we've got our pointer finger back here, uh, second fret of the E string. So now we're going to be chicken picking. So that first bend was just with our pick because we had our pinky finger down here doing the swell. Once that swelled in, we're going to chicken pick the rest. And we've got our third finger on our right hand on the high E string, second finger on the B string, and pick on the G string. So we just did this. Then we do this. Bend it back down. Pull off to the second fret of G, over to the fourth fret of D, and back to the second fret of G. And then to end, we slide up from 4 to 7 on D, pinky fingers on the 7th of B, which we cluck and pull off to 5. And throughout this whole first riff, we get the third concept, which is letting strings overlap each other. So um, we're not, um, it's not staccato. We're really trying to let the strings kind of ring out over each other as much as we can, even if it's just subtly. You hear how that, right there, all three of these strings are ringing out. Some of them are louder than others, which is fine. We're just looking for that subtle kind of background noise of some of these other notes ringing out that are within the scale. So there's lick one, and that's actually the three uh, kind of techniques we're going to be focusing on throughout the tutorial. Lick two is very similar. It's over an F sharp minor chord which is the six minor chord in this progression in the key of A, and it looks like this. We're actually not going to do the volume swell on this one. We'll just do one, two, three, go. All right, so pretty similar to start. Um, we're going to be at the same bend, 
we're going to come in on the and of one and instead of just picking this since we're not doing the volume swell we'll cluck it so we've got pick on g string middle finger on b string and we'll do two quick bends mechanical bends same thing we did second fret of high e cluck it down bend it down pull off fourth fret of d second fret of g same slide we did before four to seven on d 7th fret of B, then we're going to go all the way up to the 11th fret of D, and then we've got uh, 9th fret of high E, which will cluck, 10th fret of B, which will cluck. So like I said, we're over an F sharp minor chord, right? So that's an F sharp minor chord, and we've got, that's what we're ending on. So we're really just outlining that F sharp minor. So again, the second riff, one, two, three, go. All right, the third riff uh, looks like this. It's over a D chord. We're going to be way up here. We're going to start on the 14th fret of B, 12th fret of high E with a volume swell. All right, so a D is... That's just an octave up from a standard D, right? So that's kind of where we can... Think of centering this phrasing around because this first bend is a half bend on the B string. We're just going from here to here, note wise. And then we're doing the 14th fret of high E next. So, right there, we've got essentially we've got we're just outlining a D chord, right? Um, all right, so we're on 14 of B, 12 of high E, swell that in. Then we're going to cluck the 14th of high E, pull it off, bend it back down to the 14th fret of B, 12 of B, 14 of G, back to 12 of B, 14, slide down to 13, now the 12th of B, 13 down to 11, 10 of B, 11 down to 9 on G, Full bend, then we go up to the 7th fret of high E with a cluck, 7th fret of B, 9th um, fret of G, pick it and go up and down, full bend, down to 7, 9th fret of D, and 7th fret of G. And we're kind of ending with these three notes kind of ringing out, and that's what we want. Again, we want uh, to let these notes overlap a little bit. All right, so let's look at that again uh, in nice slow motion. One and two and three and four and one and okay that brings us to our last riff it's over an e chord and it's going to look like this So again, position three diatonic in the key of A. We're right there. Uh, by the way, that's the same as E mixolydian. E is the five chord in this progression. Don't have to get hung up on that, but just if you're interested in modes or studying modes at all, this would be E mixolydian riff. Um, but we can also think of it as being in A uh, pentatonic position three. We're going to start up here uh, with this. So we were right here, right at the end of that third riff. Our ring finger's right in position. We slide up from 9 to 11 on D. Cluck with our middle finger on the 10th fret of B. And then drop them both to a bar on the 9th fret. Then we've got 11th fret of G, 12th fret of B, with two uh, bends that we're going to cluck and pick. Same kind of thing we did before with the 9th fret on high E. Back to the 12th fret of B. Bend it back down. 9th fret, 11th fret of D. Back to 9th fret of G. So, so far we've got... And to finish it out, we'll go... 
So now, speaking in terms of the key of A, we're in position one pentatonic, moving down to position five. Position one is position five. Right, so we're right in those two areas, and we're gonna do this. So we've got a uh, sixth fret of G, fifth fret of B. We'll cluck and pick at the same time. And then we can kind of come back down, pick that again, pull off to four of G, slide down on the D string, six, four, two, and second fret of the B string. We can cluck, and then we'll end with a nice open A2 chord. Give it a little bend if you want. Uh, a little push on the top of the body of the guitar. That's open, second fret, second fret, open, open. Okay, so that fourth line, one more time. And that's the whole thing in the key of A, you guys. So let's turn on the metronome, play through that whole thing, all four riffs, right in a row, uh, at full tempo. Then in the next tutorial, we'll talk about how we can start playing these four riffs in different keys. One, two, three, go. just learned these four licks, these pedal steel style riffs in the key of A, um, but we also have the backing tracks and the demonstrations and the tabs available for you in the key of C, D, and G. And we don't need to go through and get our fingers on all these again because it's literally just a matter of shifting up and down the neck, exactly what we did. And just to kind of get an idea of where we need to put our fingers where, we can think about it in terms of the scales that we talked about. Uh, when we, at the end of this tutorial, we will talk through the key of G a little bit because then we have some open strings, we'll make a couple slight alterations. Um, but let's talk about going from A to C, for example, okay? So this first riff in the key of A, uh, All right, so this is starting in the position five pentatonic box. So if we wanted to play it in the key of C, so if the progression was C, A minor, F, G, um, one, minor six, four, five, like it is for the C jam along track, we would start in position five pentatonic in the key of C, which is right here. And as you can see on the tabs, sure enough, that first riff,
And, by the way, now we're outlining that C chord, whereas before, we're outlining this A chord. So we just shifted everything up three frets, but we play it exactly the same way. Um, exactly the same way. And it's the same thing with that next riff. So before we played it, we talked about in the last tutorial how we're kind of outlining an F-sharp minor chord because that's the chord in the progression. So when we're in the key of C, we're going from C's, which is the one chord, to an A minor. So if we start here in position five pentatonic box in the key of C, well, sure enough, right here, we're outlining this A minor chord, all right? So it all kind of locks together uh, up and down the neck just by moving everything up and down appropriately. Uh, so for A to C, we move everything up three frets, but we play it the same way. If we want to go from C to D, we do the exact same thing. Let's take that second riff in the key of D. One. Well, in the key of D, a B minor is that six minor chord, and sure enough, now we're on the B minor. So uh, to get to D, you just take it up two half steps or one full step from the key of D. So instead of here for C, we're here for the key of D. And by the way, we are starting in the position five pentatonic box for the key of D. All right, so you get the idea. Um, we don't have to change the way we finger these different riffs. We're just trying to get our minds around uh, relating these riffs to the appropriate scale based on what key we're playing them in. So we've got both the demonstrations and the jam along tracks without me playing over them uh, for all these keys. And this is a great, uh, really almost a music theory exercise because once you have your fingers on the riffs, you already know how to play the riffs. But now we're just trying to figure out if we're in a jam situation and someone wants us to jam in any one of these keys, we know the riffs. So we want to be able to put these riffs in any key that we need to. Uh, and we can figure that out based on the starting position and um, understanding how the scales fit over these keys and over the neck. All right, so let's talk about the key of G, because in the key of G, position five pentatonic, we could go way up here, but then you'd be way up here. I can't even get my fingers on it, which is impractical. So we would need to play this one down in the open string, so it would look like this. So there are a couple differences. The main ones, for this bend, this is a tough bend. To get that to sound like a pedal steel this low, because this is hard to bend this note, so I actually use pointer, middle, and ring finger all together to bend that up to hold it in the pinkies on the third fret of B. We can volume swell that in. The rest of it uh, is really not that bad. When we get to the very end, we obviously can't play this kind of A2, right? Because we run, we'd be way down here, which we don't have the frets for. So we're going to play a G2, like that. Third fret, mute the A, open D, uh, second fret of G, third fret of B, third fret of high E. So again, the reason that we're doing this exercise and putting these riffs in different keys uh, is really to understand how the neck works together and how we can transfer these riffs to really any key that we want, as long as we understand um, the scale that we're playing out of, we can put that in the right key. And that's really an important step as we uh, you know, become better guitar players and really uh, just better musicians.